Good afternoon, guys. Dr. Ken Nordberg here again. We're going to talk about part two of rut phase three, the primary breeding phase of the rut. Another thing that can happen is that, uh, let's say here's the, the big buck with a doe, and uh, they're not far from one of the buck's previous ground scrapes. And here's this other buck hanging around him. Maybe even two, maybe there's a yearling and some three and a half year old, good sized buck, uh, trailing these, this breeding pair around. And uh, this buck might get, he's really upset about that. And, oh, he sees this ground scrape over there and he's decided, I better make, I better make refresh in that. I'm going to go over there. And he'll go over there and paw dirt every which way and just really dig in there and get lots of fresh dirt flying all over the place. And then he'll go over to the overhanging bank and just massacre that as well. And, and uh, anytime you're in the woods hunting in November and you come across a just renewed ground strip like that with dirt, moss, kick leaves way over there, far from the, that's a buck. He's, he's a mad buck. He's, uh, just ready to battle. He's just really furious about another buck being around. Well, now, uh, if you find one like that, uh, that means several things. First of all, uh, the buck is mad. The second is he's with a doe and estrus. And the third thing is there's another buck, or maybe even two, hanging nearby. If you stumble upon a ground scrape in November while uh, breeding is in progress, that looks like that. It's one of your best chances ever to take a big buck. I've taken quite a few bucks under those circumstances in the last 25 years. You find one like that, back up, don't, don't mess around there. You, oh, there it is. You see it now. Oh, this is exciting, a really exciting find. Back off. Uh, if you use a, back, a backpack stool like I do, this is fairly easy to do. Back off. Get about 25 yards away at least. Uh, sit down, downwind, in dense cover where you're really your body is well hidden. Sit down on your stool and pull your camel head net down over your face. Put your blaze orange cap on top, of course, but pull it down. You, want, you don't want any skin exposed in these circumstances. Sit where you got a solid backdrop behind you, big tree trunks or a brush, or a, a steep bank, or deep grasses. You want a solid background behind you so your body isn't well, isn't easy to distinguish that silhouette of yours. Okay, sit there and sit very still. I've had big bucks, dominant bucks, return to that ground scrape within 15 minutes. And I got them. <laughs> Dropped them right on his ground scrape. Uh, I, I shot them while they were up there rubbing scalp musk, scalp scent, scent on the branches overhanging the, the tree or banging around on the tree trunks. I've gotten them. Now, I've sat as long as four hours. Uh, one time I found it in the morning, I went back in the afternoon. This one time when I would use the same stand say it twice in a row. I went back and got them in the afternoon. But uh, boy, it can sure happen fast. You sit down there and you're just getting comfortable and all of a sudden, here's a buck rubbing scalps and a branch over that, that ground scrape that are really fresh. So what the buck did is came back to make sure his ground scrape was doing the job. Is there any of those bucks around here? And uh, do I need to put some more uh, uh, tarsal musk on the scrape or get this really stinking? I don't know what they're thinking. But they're not far away, see, unless you, unless you accidentally alarm them, all the deer will be gone if you did that. But if, if you heard no snorting or no bounding deer, chances are really good that they're still really close. So back off, sit down, be patient. It's one of your best chances of the season to take a big buck. Now, same with that that little bush that got massacred or this this single tree that got busted up it means exactly the same thing as that ground scrape it means a buck is with a doe and estrus in there nearby if it was freshly done 
uh, very nearby, and there's another buck or more also very nearby. So do the same thing. Back up, sit down, and wait for a while. And chances are your patience be well rewarded. So those are really good things to know about this this particular time, uh, this particular phase of the rut. Now, ordinarily, you won't find many ground scrapes renewed. And at this time, it, is, it really is a waste of time to be sitting somewhere near a ground scrape that's not being re regularly renewed, or even a, a so-called, uh, uh, well, a man-made scrape with a drip of doe and estrus pheromone on it. The thing to keep in mind is that when a buck is with a doe in heat, he won't leave that doe in heat for anything. He can, there can be nine other does in heat all around him. Those other does have to go to the buck. He's not going to leave that doe and estrus to go to where he thinks he smells another doe and estrus. Not until she quits emitting the pheromone. That's the way it works. Does in, that doe, that's why does in heat don't wait around very long. Um, if they, don't, if they don't see a, uh, the big dominant buck soon, they'll go looking for them, and usually they find them pretty quickly because by this time those big bucks are really stinking with musk. But at any rate, uh, those are important things to know. So, quit, don't hunt scrape, site, scrape trails while breeding is in progress because most of the time they aren't being renewed any, at this time. They're just going to be left alone. You're going to waste an awful lot of valuable hunting time, hunting scrapes, even with or without doe and estrus pheromone as, as a bait. It just isn't going to work out so well. There's much better places to hunt, so keep that in mind. But if <laughs> you find a really fresh ground scrape, you know, it looks like it's just been renewed, holy man. <laughs> That's the holy grail of buck hunting. So uh, do what I said, you'll do much better than that. Now, anyway, the, those will be, the, the different does will be in estrus and up to about two weeks. And after the two week period is up, they're all done. And during that period, about 85% of does will be bred. Uh, some, for various reasons, maybe even hunting is one of those reasons. About 15% of does won't be bred during this period. They'll be missed. Or maybe it's a, a doe, uh, a yearling doe, who just hasn't had estrus yet, might have estrus during the second period of breeding or the third period of breeding. But at, at any rate, 15% uh, haven't bred yet. So, but they aren't going to be, come into estrus again, won't, come, won't be in heat again, for 28 days. So there's a period in between here where... Uh, there won't be any estrus in the, in the, in the, in the air, or doe and estrus pheromone in the air. And bucks will respond accordingly. Now, let me tell you about my favorite place. That, my whole game, where we hunt bucks while breeding is in progress. Think about this. Uh, breeding, we know breeding is in progress now. It's after November 3rd, so they're breeding. Where's the best place to hunt the big buck? Right, where should I hunt that big buck? Well, uh, it's going to be with a doe and estrus. We know that. Well, somewhere, you know, that, and let's say you got four square miles. You've got four dominant bucks cruising near square miles all in this one area here. And within those four miles, there's probably at least a couple of does, maybe three, that are in estrus during any one day that you're hunting. Well, think of this. Does always eat during normal feeding. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It can be in heat. When it's time to eat, uh, usual hours that they feed, they feed. Like in the morning, they start feeding some not long after four in the morning. The whitetails begin feeding that early. And they'll feed until, depending on where you are, like where we are, we have a lot of wolves and they usually quit feeding shortly after nine o'clock. But most other areas, 10, maybe even 11 o'clock in the morning, they'll feed all during this period. And then they'll go back to their bedding areas, and then they won't start feeding again until about, oh, around 4 in the afternoon, sometimes earlier, a little earlier, and until uh, about 4 hours after sunset. So those are the two feeding times. Well, the does feed during those periods, no matter what. 
And, and when they leave their bedding area to go feeding, the big buck will be right with them the whole way. It'll be real close to them all at once. They usually fall right behind them. At this time, you think those bucks are subservient to the does, but they aren't. The, the big dominant bucks are a king of all of the deer, except at this time, a doe and asterisk comes first. <laughs> but anyway, he'll be fond, so he's going to go to the feeding. He's going to go in the feeding area. Now think of this too: when deer are bedded, they're really hard to see. You know, and they aren't making any noise. They're laying in heavy cover, and they're laying real still. And they, their their natural camouflage makes them really difficult to see. But so they're in there, and, and your chances of seeing a deer uh, that's bedded is, aren't very well, aren't very good. Midday, unless there are certain weather conditions that can change that. We'll talk about that one day. But at any rate, uh, they're most visible, most vulnerable to good stand hunting during the period of feeding. Now, feeding areas tend to be relatively open because most of the stuff that deer feed is only about this tall, right? you know, and uh, there's grasses and uh, various kinds and acorns maybe and uh, 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 browse after the second week in November. They start eating woody shrubs, uh, stems of woody shrubs called browse. Well, out in those, in those areas, the sun has to be able to reach the ground where all these things grow that light, white tails like to eat, even in the wintertime. And so it's relatively open out there. And there's no place in a white tail range where white tails are more visible than in a feeding area. This, and they're up and about. They're moving around. This is, this is a time when you can really see the deer, your best chance of taking one. Well, that doe and estrus will be out there feeding and won't be paying much attention to the buck, but the buck will be paying attention to her. Some of these bucks don't even care to eat the, during this period. They'll just restlessly follow that doe while she's feeding. But he'll be most vulnerable too. And his mind is going to be on the doe. And he's quite vulnerable now to hunting. A good stand hunter has the best chance there is to get an easy shot at a really big buck during this period because his mind is on that doe. Now, so, where's the best spot to hunt? Where does feed. Now, if, if you find tracks uh, adjacent to a feeding area uh, that are railroad tracks, buck dragging his hoofs from track to track, it's almost certain that buck is out there in that feeding area right now. If you're going to stand in the morning and boy, you run across tracks like that, that's pretty exciting stuff. There's a big, the biggest buck living around here is out there with a doe right now. Uh, if you find tracks like that, or even tracks of, of two deer sneak along, and one is this great big one, and the other one is obviously a doe, or a smaller track, it means the same thing. They're out there. He just doesn't drag in his tracks at this moment. They're kind of sneaking into this feeding area. That's an awfully good sign that, boy, you're going to get one there. Uh, it happens every year in my deer camp. Somebody will come to camp uh, at noon the first day or second day and they say, found, I found railroad tracks. <laughs> and oh, we make it a point to hunt that buck right after lunch every day. And we've taken so many big bucks. I Honestly, a uh, couple dozen in the last 25 years after finding railroad tracks. And I'll tell you all about how we do that one day. But we're... Um, in that case, if we do things right, we have a group hunting technique that we call uh, the gentle nudge, <laughs> using human scent to keep as a fence line that makes deer go in the opposite direction. Or, or another group thing I, I like to cover, uh, call it cover all bases, buck hunting, but we'll get to those at another time. Well, that's it for today, you guys. Uh, Part three will be coming up soon. You don't want to miss it. The important climax to uh, where to hunt during this phase. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.